Alright, well, I know it's been a long time, but I have an excuse. I didn't know what to do. Objects that move from the ground up to the player in the air. If you think about this in terms of how you would have to animate this with sprites, it just seemed a little overwhelming to me. Let's say a missile is launching from a silo on the ground. You will see the top, and then as it comes out, it will start laying down, and you'll see it from the side as it reaches the height of the player. Thinking about how to do this with flat sprites just didn't work in my head. What I ended up doing was coming across something called sprite stacking. So for those of you that don't know what sprite stacking is, this handy animation is pretty amazing at explaining how it works. It's almost voxels, but instead of 3D objects you're using nothing but 2D planes and stacking them in order to make it seem like you have a 3D object. And this allows you to place that object with the same perspective in any rotation that you'd like in your scene and retain that form so that it's recognizable from all sides. So as you can see for something like a building that would be very useful if I wanted to do a neighborhood rounded roads along the edges I would have to draw 2D sprites in the correct perspective and it just seemed like too much so I found some videos uh, this being the one that explains it the most and this being the one that was the most impressive this this is amazing to me that this is not a 3d model this is a sprite stack it's it's amazing the first step that I took was to find somebody's implementation of a sprite stack and just sort of play with it for a little while this is the package that I found uh, it's just pancakes, or it was just pancakes. Uh, I figured out how it worked and sort of made my own awful boomerang. And as you can see, he took it a bit further and set up light maps, which is not something I have delved into yet, but I did make a little spaceship sort of looking thing just to see what this was going to do for me. I came to the realization that if I'm going to use a sprite stack, as I said before, it has to be in the same perspective. With the missile launching from the silo in the ground, this really isn't going to help me. So I started looking into voxel programs. I wanted to make it simpler and something that I could pipeline through and just churn out some art f as fast as possible and get some assets in this in this game so that I can start to see what it's actually going to look like. The process that I came up with is it's similar to using textures for bump mapping, relief mapping, a system based on a diffuse image and a height map. And so the process for making these becomes pretty simple. You take your standard 2D art, draw your image like you normally would, and I just straight converted it over to a black and white image. The way this program works is it finds a folder that has image marked with a label diffuse and an image marked top height, and it generates palettes for each of those images and shows me the images. The way that I can interact with these images is to repaint them. I can repaint them any, any color that's in the palette that I already have for the image. And I can also change the height of the image uh, with respect to how it's going to build the voxel art. The entire plan for this is to start with voxel art and then for the assets that I can, I'm going to slice up that voxel art and create a sprite stack to lessen 
the impact, the resource usage, so that I'm not using 3D models for everything. What I'm going to do is treat these voxels as though they are one pixel in size. So this is an 8x8 image. This would translate into an 8x8 sprite. Like I said, I can go in, I can change the color, and I can change the height. Now, the way the height works is a lot different than the way the color works. The way the height map works is if I left click, nothing will happen. This is my highest color, and the way this works is that when I left click, the color height increases, and when I right click, the color height decreases. I can go through and easily set any pixel in this image to the corresponding height that I have over here in my palette. One of the problems you might notice with that is what if I want to add another level of height? The way that you do this is you go over here and click any of these. Say I want to put a layer underneath this. I would push down and click and as you can see it modified this height map. We added a new color here which is in between these two colors and these two colors are painted and this one is not so we went we needed to add that new color in and recolor our image around that color I can set our new color and with this height map and the diffuse map I can generate a 3d voxel uh, as you can see a little tiny voxel showed up I've got the created voxel and I can left click and rotate the object and I can also color the faces so say I wanted to put a checkerboard in here just a few clicks and I've got my checkerboard I can also add in voxels so if I needed to add something like an antenna up here, I can just click and add those voxels. As far as creating the models, this is pretty much, I think, all I need. Um, I do need to be able to erase voxels, which I currently cannot do. I also need to be able to save so I think with a little bit of work I can get this to the point where I can actually start churning out some assets so that I can visualize where I need to go with this. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple other things that I worked on when prototyping this uh, with the help of this asset store asset native file browser from Crosstails it's just works super easy literally a one-liner <laughs> so when I start my program up it's gonna come up with a native file browser and all I need to do is open up the folder that I want select it and it will pull up my art this was the first sort of higher scale sort of art that I sort of started playing around with. Uh, again, started with a diffuse, moved over to making a black and white image, and putting what I thought would be good values for the heights in there. Uh, when I generate it, you'll see that it's really not that great, but it does look like a spaceship even though it's not not great looking right now but the editor gives you the ability to go back in and change it and make sure that it looks the way that you want it to in the end alright so I was able to get it to generate before but we were running at less than one frame per second uh, there's a lot of optimization I need to do obviously to make this work more fluidly <laughs> and actually have a frame rate but as you can see it 
it is voxel art. I'll go ahead and show you the first thing that I worked on, which is a simple stop sign. So this was the first thing I worked on because it seemed like it would be a something very simple to work on. And as you can see, the back is mirrored, so an easy way to fix this would be to simply recolor all the faces gray. So it looks like I might want to look into a flood fill tool to be able to do this quicker. But the framework's here and I have something I can actually look forward to doing now. I'll have links in the description of all the resources that I used, including the asset from Crosstails, the pancake demo uh, from a guy whose name I can't remember right now, but he'll be in the description. And uh, yeah, look forward to showing you a few models now that I've got something to actually move forward with. Thanks for watching.